This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. up here in the attic. Calm it, it went off. There's nothing to watch. <laughs> Calm net. Everything's 3D Hollywood today. I remember back when I was, I was your age, you used to just uh, get our old TV set, no satellite hookups or anything, just took our signals out of the air. But wasn't that dangerous? Well, that was, of course, uh, before the uh, Surgeon General found a link between uh, TV signals and cancer. That was before your time. Remember some old 2D shows, though? Uh, some were even in black and white. Wow! Of course, that was uh, before President Turner put that in false colorization law through in the 20s. Our show's been really boring. They weren't even interactive. Uh, don't be so sure about that. There were some great shows back then. Oh, wait a minute. Let me look at this. Mm. Ooh, what? what's that? Oh, it's called a VCR. <laughs> Uh, see, back before all the video was put directly into computer memory in the comnet, people used to tape shows. Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, there's, there's a tape already in here. Let me let me hook this up here. Let me see what we got. Uh, oh, ooh, oh, damn radiation! <laughs> Come back with us to the '60s and '70s, the dwelling place of the lost generation. An era whose heroes, role models, and very lives were molded and formed by weekly installments of favorite television programs. As your parents didn't understand. Welcome to the vast wasteland. Welcome, Welcome home. home. exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. I'm your host, Mark Smidbar, along with Wilbur Neal and Marty Wiley. We're here to talk about 60s and 70s television. So before we go into the big extravaganza fun, I just want to tell you we're on Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 10, and Thursdays at 3 p.m. here on ACTV Cable 21. Also, if you want to write in to us, our address is Box 151526, Columbus, Ohio, Four three two one five, and uh, it's also if you're interested in our big uh, video, what ex- James Among Friends deal thing <laughs> with no money included. <laughs> That's right. If if there's some Trains. show you're looking for and you can't seem to find it, this is this is your big opportunity. Right into us, and we'll, uh, we'll broadcast talk. your message over the half or dozen of people who actually watch us. And maybe one of them actually have a tape of that show. Just now, maybe. Is, but this is not for money. We want to emphasize this is not for money. This is a simple trade kind of deal, maybe some sort of barter deal. You know, Free and if you have fun. a chicken or something, you can like trade for it. I don't know. But uh, no, no, now chickens are considered to be currency in some parts of the, <laughs> that's right. the world. So no. pigs. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pigs. So, so. Uh, we just want to see those uh, letters rolling in for that. Anyway. Or flying in or flapping flying in, in or however letters are delivered. Well, That's I don't right. Know. Well, uh, let's move into our big, uh, yep. our big show tonight. And uh, we're... Start just... again. <laughs> this is part two of our big show on 
maverick comedy shows, comedy shows that really broke the rules. And uh, we've already talked about laughing, and we just started breaking the surface of Monty Python. And so let's move more into Monty Python. Wilbert, what do we got here? <laughs> oh, I just missed my entrance, <laughs> and no one can do anything about it. <laughs> A little inside dances with wolves, Homer. Okay. But, well, by golly, Monty Python, did this really, it started in 68, is that right? 69. 69. In 69, by, well, we were still watching Laugh-In. We're still watching Laugh-In. <laughs> That's right. And the, over across the pond there, they're doing this great, outrageous, humorous show with absolutely no scruples or anything. <laughs> Coherency or anything. It was just <laughs> Downright silly. It was silly. It was so silly it was innovative. And it was great. And it and to prove how innovative it was, we didn't get it until what? 75, 76? 75, 76, yeah. And they were done with four seasons of the thing already. Right. And knew about it. That's right. And then we developed our own ripoff of it. Right. Exactly. Yay. But, Several, in fact. Yeah. So, Several, but, but we get ahead of really ourselves. Good right. So first, uh let's see, uh let's uh go through the uh yes. What, start out with the short-lived or the long-lived? Well, let's see. First, we had uh, the Python, the Python troop, Cleese, Chapman, Idle, Palin, Jones, and Gilliam. That's Graham, Terry, Terry, Eric. <laughs> uh, the Michael in there. Michael and and, and, and... and and another Terry. No. <laughs> Peter, no. A that's Bob, Peter. a Bob. No. No. <laughs> ring Let me see. Let me see. Graham Chapman, Eric Idle, Terry Jones, John? Terry Gilliam, Graham, John? Graham, Graham Cleese. John, John, Chapman, John. Graham Chapman. <laughs> John Cleese. John Cleese. John Cleese. So is that, wait, is that, did I get them all? I think. I you got to go back to remedial. That's Cleese. it. Start the game. Mm. Well, well okay. anyway, you know who they there's are. six of them. But there's only, you usually only saw five of them because the, the sixth one usually just did the animation. That was Terry Gilliam. That was Terry Gilliam, the, the American, who, who is from, now from Canada. Canada. Yeah. Now gone, the Canada. American. now gone on to fame and fortune with uh, Brazil and uh, Baron Munchausen. And uh, I don't know, is he working on a project right now? Probably. They are working on something about superheroes. The last, the last thing I heard, they were doing something about superheroes. They're supposed to be doing all. something about superheroes. Something about some aging superheroes, but hey. We don't know. We don't know we what all. it is. Yeah. So, um, let's see. We had uh, a show that, uh, of course, a show with all men running the show uh, meant if you had any women on the show. It was Carol Cleveland. Uh, well, <laughs> a Carol Cleveland or one of the men. <laughs> men dressed up as women. And that, uh, of course, was one of the, the major fixtures on the show were what were called the pepper pots. And these were the women who sat around and uh, basically complained about everything. <laughs> Good morning, Mrs. Lobster. Good morning, Mrs. Non-Lobster. What are you doing? Oh, I've been shopping. Well, what'd you buy? A piston engine. What you oh, it was a bargain. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that too. <laughs> so let's see. We had um, you had your pepper pots. Uh, some of uh, well, let's just go into favorite uh, sketches, I suppose. Favorite sketches. Well, by golly, I think a favorite for anybody that watches the Python thing, a favorite, that a staple of any time they show the series, if they don't show this we'll one, they've just it. wasted their money, is the, the dead parrot. Yeah. yeah. The, the dead deceased dead parrot. parrot. <laughs> no, he's only... He's pining for, for the fjord. Pining <laughs> for the fjord. He's a Norwegian blue. He's just... Pining for the fjord. Well, the Norwegian blue enjoys kipping on his back, governor. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a good one. It's it's basically this thing. This this parrot is dead, and he was the guy sold it to the man as as a live parrot and claimed that it was sleeping. It was nailed to the perch. <laughs> so well, it had nailed to the perch. If he had nailed it to that perch, he would have gone up to the muscled up to those bars well, and bent him over the beacon. Boom. <laughs> This bird wouldn't, wouldn't boom, boom if we put 5,000 volts, volts through it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's, that's one. And also, I also enjoyed the Gumbies. <laughs> <laughs> they were basically people that are like, well, they're, they're brain damaged, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> they got their heads wrapped up. Well, they put hey. a handkerchief on their heads and their pants are pulled up like, yes. like Urkel. And <laughs> <laughs> they got their pants rolled up, their sleeves rolled up. 
and they talk like this. <laughs> and stand very rigidly. And how they live on? Never mind. <laughs> you see them walking the streets of Columbus. No, <laughs> no, no. They're nice. And let's see. There's, uh, uh, gosh, just stop. Hey, another another favorite that Can if you, you think just don't one? see it, it's just not worth even turning it on. It's a lumberjack Lumber song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there. There's a song, by golly. And, and we were talking about last time, the really great thing about the show was the fact that there was, n it, uh, how it broke the rules was that it is, that uh, if they had a funny concept that didn't have a punchline on any other show until now, they would have been like, well, we can't use it because we don't have a punchline. You know, or if we don't, if we got a great punchline, but we don't have a good lead into it, it'd be thrown away. But on this show, it was like, who needs this, this beginning, middle and end stuff? <laughs> We're we'll just, just going to go, bam, right into it. <laughs> Wherever it happens, that's when it happens. And, and if you don't catch it, then you, then you watch the rerun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere along the line, it'll finally hit. Oh, this oh. is funny. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Where have I been? It's well, also the twit of the year it's competition. funny because you want to be so cool that you got it. Nobody else did. <laughs> well, I think that a lot of people, a lot, I've heard a lot of people say, well, I can't watch the show because I can't understand what they're saying. <laughs> They just couldn't well, get the British accent. Yeah, the British accent. Well, is this is what for us. PBS is for. Sure. You watch these shows and you pick up the British <laughs> accent. accent. It's not what PBS before long, like, you for. find yourself doing the British accent. <laughs> well, I mean, the, you get PBS, so you can watch these BBC shows. Okay. Great, and this, which was one of them. Mm-hmm. Well, one of my one of my favorites has to be has to be Spam. Oh. I think. Uh, <laughs> Which which works better technically, I think, on the album than it does in the on the show. Yeah, because in the album you get the you can hear the Vikings orchestral. and the, the <laughs> great orchestral the in yeah, <laughs> and you, I mean the Vikings come in one speaker and the the guy and his wife are at the other speaker so with the waiter and you, you get the spam 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 and, and if you've never fine. seen this, well, this is all just lost on you. Yeah, basically. <laughs> if you, <laughs> we're not even going to try to explain these sketches. We're just going to zip right through them. You Jim can turn Dale. down the sound for a while if you never, <laughs> if you never watch Python. <laughs> so, well, let's see. Uh, what's another? Uh, well, one of the best written ones, I think, is Argument Clinic. Yeah. And it's just a very tight sketch. A man comes in, wants to have an argument, and he comes into several rooms. It's a very nice, it's a very uh, cheap sketch, really, because he just keeps coming into the same room with clever camera shots. that looks like he's going into several rooms. And they always have a different person in there. Yeah. You get the, uh, the guy in charge of... Um, contradiction. No. <laughs> no, that's a... Came in for an argument. No, it's a contradiction. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> that, that's the contradiction thing. No, it isn't. Insult. He gets <laughs> insulted first. He gets he gets horribly insulted first, and then he goes in and gets contradicted. Right, and then he goes into the complaints department, department, and the guy complains at him. Yeah. <laughs> and and he finally goes getting in hitting and hitting him in the head. <laughs> yeah, that's the uh, hitting being hit on the head lesson. Yes. <laughs> what a stupid concept. <laughs> it's just silly. Yes. I don't know. On to something else. LAPD took that course. No, go on. <laughs> Ooh, social humor. <laughs> <laughs> Relevancy. Oh, watch CNN. <laughs> yeah. Relevancy. <laughs> There's relevant stuff here. <laughs> Relativity. Well, let's see. Um, and they, they had just great fun with history. Since they've got so much history over there, they, yeah, they just incorporated it yeah. as often as possible, <laughs> which was just great. And they incorporated it not only on the show, but into their movies as well. So it says Monty Python and the Holy Grail. One of truly a, a, just a milestone of a movie. They just do so many things. And it was funny, if you, too. If you consider some of the reviews, Guy the Gorilla made me want to eat my own vomit. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you gotta, you got to love a movie like that. Well, yes, well Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, I wasn't expecting a bloody Spanish Inquisition. No, no buddy, it's the Spanish, Spanish Inquisition. Inquisition. <laughs> We're just enjoying the heck out of this. <laughs> if you've never seen the show, oh, it's, you're it's lost. lost on you. <laughs> By golly. 
That of course, great. if you did it on the way, you can see it now. I was watching it on that, that one comedy network, but who the heck knows what it's called now? Yeah. <laughs> that comedy that network was comedy showing deal. it. Comedy deal. What is it called now? Knows. Comedy CTV, CTV now, it's called. CTV. <laughs> CTV. CTV. <laughs> Turn it on. CTV. <laughs> so. Sit and watch. CTV. CTV. <laughs> CJ so Rush. But I don't know where it's at showing now. I suppose you could go to the library and get a tape or something. That's yeah. They are all on videotape They're all now. On video tape you can get just about every one of those episodes. So if you don't on have a VCR, tape. I guess you're screwed on that too. <laughs> well, so, well, so, and the and the thing the thing about the show they could they the style al can alter so much during the show. Uh, some of the early episodes, especially, are very video based, very quick bits, and then there's a later show. Uh, the uh, the uh, bicycling tour or the cycling tour, which yeah, is I one sketch that, that goes one. the entire show about this this loser guy who's going on the cycling tour and he meets up with this guy who's trying to uh, make safer vegetables. Like the ultimate running gags yeah, kind of thing. It is, yeah. It goes on because and and this guy gets hit on the head and he thinks he's Trotsky and they go to Russia and it's <laughs> Isn't it so deep. Yeah, <laughs> very strange. So we ripped the show off, basically. Well, several times. Several right. Times. But uh, now it's available, like I said, we're avail available on videotape and available maybe on this new CTV. It was on the old comedy channel, but who knows? <laughs> it should have hired but, us now, anyway. <laughs> so, um, are we beating that to death or are we moving on? Yeah, we're moving yeah, well, on. Yeah, I think we've done enough of the pilot okay. thing. Oh, God. And now right. for something completely Stated different. <laughs> But not really, yeah, because it was based pretty much on this and um, Laugh-In and Ernie Kovacs, all that. We're talking. Uh, We're talking SNL. We're talking Saturday Night Live. Saturday Night Live. Live from New York. And okay. <laughs> Saturday <laughs> Night Live. And uh, this was a. Uh, Which actually, Eric Idle was on there. Palin, well, he was, Palin, Palin show. was on there. Yeah, he did that slobbery thing. It was yeah. so gross. <laughs> he first there in October of 1975. First host, George Carlin. Yeah. In fact, George Carlin had the uh, kind of the honor of opening each season there for a while, didn't well, Almost. He? It seemed like it. Are you sure? I believe. Carlin? Carlin? I don't think he ever reappeared. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Are you he sure? Did. Yeah. Sure Carlin did? Yeah. Mm hmm No, it's for a fact. Because yeah. he came on and talked about the fact that he was the first. He was the first. Time. Wow, I, I missed that. Well, and gee, now like everybody that did, see, it's like the show isn't funny anymore, kid. Because it's like when Saturday Night Live came on, it was a scream, mm -hmm. and they did like drug humor and beer humor <laughs> and, and, they, and they gross did drugs. humor. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, yeah, that's what made it so funny. <laughs> Pretty much they in, knew in, whereof they spoke. Yes, they did pretty much in the... And like now it's just like not as fun. It's like giant junior high school humor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I suppose. They well, really I was in high school when the show came on and... Well, I mean, now it's... Now, now it's, it's, yeah, like now it's just like, humor. it's like, I don't know, maybe they're aiming for... The to be popular school. or something. Yeah, they're, they're trying to create They used to be on three times the... the, the, the they weren't on the first Saturday. You had some news kind of show. It was weekend. Weekend. With uh, Linda Ellerby and Lloyd Dobbin. Uh-huh. And then the last three Saturdays of the month, you got right. Saturday Night Live. Right. Which was just a totally new concept. Having having a, um, a, a late night show. show, for one, but then a show, having... A show in New York. It's a live done, show. A live show. Which, which, at that point, nobody was doing live shows. No, anything, forget it. The news wasn't live. No, no. Maybe the news was. But that was, other than that... <laughs> Parts yeah, of the news were live. Parts of the news were live. I mean, no, sure. nothing was live. It was like, if it's not a videotape, we don't want to talk about it, you know. And they wanted everything to be safe. And 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 uh, this Lorne Michaels guy came in and said, well, I want to do a show that's kind of a... Uh, well, he basically lied to them. <laughs> <laughs> he said, oh, this is going to be kind of like, uh, like, kind of like a laugh-in kind of thing, you know. And it was, and he said, and he, you know, and... If you read stuff about this, basically Lauren was like, I had no intention of doing this. <laughs> when we first began, there was nothing like it on the air, and we had a kind of crusade feeling. It was a feeling of us against them, against the network, against the conventional wisdom of TV at the time. 
the intent was pure. We were incredibly naive. <laughs> <laughs> and now Lauren Michaels is this power mad uh, ex producer, executive guy. Right. He has given us the kids in the hall, which are fantastic out mm. of Canada, but but the show isn't funny anymore. <laughs> well, but it's funny. We don't, we don't want to talk funny. about the, 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 the post 1980 nope, show. Okay. Because it's not in our, you know, this but is everyone, 60s and you know, 70s. everyone from the original cast is either really, really famous now or really, or the really dead. dead. <laughs> <laughs> Except for Barrett Morris, who is terribly overlooked. And Lorraine. <laughs> well, she well, changed Lorraine, her face. Yeah, Lorraine, yeah. like, did the nose job thing. She's only got enough what money mean? to do she that. She did the whole face thing. And she just looks totally different. If you watch Saturday Night Live, and you see Lorraine Newman, and then you see her on something now, it's not where, the same person. Where do you see her on? <laughs> oh, I've seen her on something, but I can't remember what it was, because when I see her, I don't recognize her. That's just... I don't. I, I, I haven't seen well, her for a she, long time. She did I, that movie with uh, with Jamie Lee Curtis and, and uh, oh oh yeah, that's right. And what was that? Perfect. Perfect. Is that what it was called? Yeah. Okay. She was in that movie, and it's like that was the I first time we got one. to see her with her her new look, and it was like Who totally knows? different. She doesn't even look like Lorraine. And then we've got um the people that you always see now, Dan Aykroyd. My gosh, you always seeing Dan. <laughs> Either in a either in a really good movie or in a really bad movie like that, nothing really but trouble. <laughs> well, I, I never get to, I never did see that. I haven't seen it yet, at least. I well, probably I will think see you it. missed it. Oh, no, no, it's still around. It is still well, around. Well, see, you know, you know, a movie's bad when like like two days before the movie opens, they change the name of it. Because <laughs> this movie was called Vulcanvania, so like yeah. <laughs> so like the week before, they went ah, nothing but trouble, <laughs> which I think was pretty much the producer said this show has been nothing, nothing but, but trouble. trouble. Let's call it that. <laughs> So, he's like made a killing as the Ghostbusters and, yeah. of course, the Blues Brothers, Blues Brothers, which started on Saturday Night Live right? Yeah. with Belushi doing the flips on stage and stuff. Of course, I guess you can do that when you're on cocaine, but I don't know. Right. <laughs> anyway. And, th and that started, of course, as, as a warm-up act for the show. Yeah. They did it several joke. times, and they finally said, hey, let's put this on the show, and they did, and it became this enormous hit, and John went on to fame, fortune, cocaine, and death. <laughs> you know what's <laughs> really weird? <laughs> what's... There was a, they used to have the shorts on there, the Gary Weiss short film. Yep. And they did one that really, it's really scary to watch now because it's Belushi going yep. through a graveyard. Uh, yeah. Talking about all the other cast members. And he's the last member that lived. And he's the last one alive. Of course, he was the first one to die. Right. Which, I mean, but it was like right after he uh, died, yeah. I and saw it. it's really it. creepy to watch and that. it's so scary to watch it now. It just, it freaks me out, but I saw it, like, soon after he died, and it just really bothered me. There's a, there's a really funny um, Gary Weiss, I, I, I don't think it's Gary Weiss, I think it was they, uh, near the beginning of the show, they were doing, um, pretty much anybody could send in a home, home videos, movie. Home videos, yeah. Home movie. It's home actually movies. a precursor to America's Funniest Home Videos, but they were okay. a lot ruder. One of them was led to Mr. Bill, but, oh, um, no. but uh, this one, I've only seen it once, it was called The Hubcap Thief. And this was hilarious. There was this, this guy ripping off hubcaps, and he gets to one, and he gets his hand stuck. And he gets his other hand, and he gets that stuck. And he's trying desperately to get out, and he gets his feet stuck. And a guy gets in the other He's on the passenger side of the car. And so he can't see. <laughs> the, the, the driver gets in the car, not seeing the guy there, and drives off. And you see the guy kind of going. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> really, yeah. I remember this a long time ago. I, they've never shown it since, I don't think. And it, it was hilarious. And, and they did the thing, too, like if they were in a sketch and it wasn't working. They, oh, <laughs> or they dropped the cow. That was, yeah, that they was dropped the, the cow. Thing. Yeah, there was a lot of python uh, stuff to the show. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, Chevy Chase said they were always uh, they were always mad that uh, that, uh, they, that they couldn't edit the show. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, they would have done a lot of stuff, more stuff like Python, except it was live. You know, <laughs> kind of hard to. But they did do some some interesting things. I mean, like. Uh, well, the the classic fall that Chevy always did at the oh, beginning man, of the Chevy show. Oh man, Chevy put a lot into that show. Uh, Broke the everything. Fall, yeah. There's uh, the classic uh, Belushi in the um, in the news thing. He's doing the he's doing his talking, and, and he just falls yeah. back, you know, or whatever. And the butt, no, and and. And, um, Excuse me, which well, was Steve, Steve Martin, Martin, but he he brought it on there and it kind of stayed on there because he was on a few times too. And uh, he would always bring up his friend Steve Buscemi or something like that. There was a, yeah. if, if there was a third person involved, 
in the in the story, it was always the Steve, Steve Buscemi, <laughs> who was actually a real person, as I understand. Well, as I understand it, that uh, Richard Fader, who Roseanne Richard Rosanna Fader, Dana, we always <laughs> talk about, was a real person. Yeah. Roseanne <laughs> Rosanna Dana. One of one of the great characters off of here, like well, Emily Lucella was another great character on there. <laughs> <laughs> all these, all these wonderful characters. That if, well, if you never saw the original ones, these are just kind of lost. Too, but, but I mean, there's lots of places to watch that. That's uh, true. You can watch Nick at Night. It's been on all the time. You want classic uh, SNL. It's watered down on Nick at Night. Well, it's and you know, the we, half hour one. Yeah, yeah but it, I don't know. They've cut out. They've cut out the really objectionable things. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can tell it's like, oh, that may offend somebody. Oh, they get rid of that. No more Spud commercials. And, yeah. See, that was that was the the real beauty of the show that they tried to offend just about everybody. Yeah. Uh -huh. At one point or another. Yeah, pretty much. And then we kind of had the uh, rip off of Saturday Night Live for a brief time, which was a good show. Friday. Fridays. Fridays was a good show. Uh, it was good. I, I debate yeah, that. Somebody, yeah, somebody carries on. <laughs> Melanie Chardoff was... Yeah, Melanie Chardoff. Uh, what, what that geeky it? guy in the movie. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, what it, Richard... What is his name? There's uh, well, Mark Blankfield. Uh, I was like the character of the little kid that had his G.I. Joe. And he was ripping up. Oh, that, was, that was the crazy, the, the tall guy. Yeah. The one that did all the, all the funny stuff. Oh, you remember George? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> and and the pharmacist the... take up. Yeah, that was a Mark Blankfield, just a great one. And Melly and Chardoff was always, she was just bitchy. So, <laughs> well, she was just sedate kind of on but that certainly, show. But certainly a show that never, that never particularly broke rules because all, all the rules were basically all the rules have been broken, broken by Saturday Night Live and they just kind of walked in and said, oh. <laughs> well, do you remember the other attempt? I think I only saw the show once. It was called Fun Zone or something. Dr. Demento was like a major host on the show. I swear I saw this show. <laughs> well, they were yeah, like a bunch of They had Bud, them, Bud and Pamela Tater commenting on the wind-up toy races or something. And they were Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head. And I know I saw this show. <laughs> okay. It was on late at night. It was after, I think it was a post Fridays. It may have, I don't remember if it was in the late 70s or when I saw this show, but I know I saw this show. <laughs> it was Dr. Like Bruno, had Tom Friday hat on. Yeah. <laughs> but it was kind of a spin-off, but I don't remember no. what it was and on. Also, it was on once, I, too. I, I really hate to give this show short shift, because uh, we've only got like a couple minutes left, but... Uh, Another late night show, of course, was SCTV, yeah. which we've hardly even. We have and a lot a couple of Saturday minutes. Night Live people came off of that. Yeah, yeah. there was like a war, pretty much, for a long time. Uh, people exactly. like people like John Candy. There was like uh, both shows were trying to get him to go on, and finally he went to SCTV. Mm -hmm. And um, but weren't Belushi was originally a Second City person, mm, wasn't he? No, it? he was from no. Uh, Ackroyd was second. No, was Ackroyd second city? I believe so. Yeah, because they, uh, Radner they was young. second city. Bill they Murray was second Murray city, was, and they yeah. did uh, Lampoons too. Yeah, That's right. Lampoon Lampoon radio hours yeah. mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So there's a lot of cross pollination there. Well, because since then some of the SCTVs have come over and done Saturday Night Live. Right. Martin Short. Yeah, Martin yeah. Short. And such, but gee, uh, it's my, like. <laughs> although my favorite character in SCTV has to be. Guy Caballero. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't like couch food? Ladies and oh. gentlemen. <laughs> I'm, Ooh, that's scary stuff. I'm Guy Caballero, <laughs> president and owner of the SCTV Network. <laughs> and isn't it scary? Like, like Ed Grimley's like famous. Like, you know, people know who he is, but nobody knew who he was. Yeah. <laughs> he was just a goofy character. Yep. And like, on the day I saw guy, Ed, day I saw him on Sesame Street, I left. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, how about Dr. Tun? <laughs> 3D House of Representatives. Well, 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 how about Edith? <laughs> Edith Prickly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let yourself get down unless you're going to do something. <laughs> Edith's such a, such a, such a lady. <laughs> yeah.